Almost 80% there of the national vote counted. What's it all mean? Well, here's the Australian's national editor, Dennis Shanahan. We've just seen that uh, breakdown. Even in the state of Victoria, I couldn't believe that when that came in on Saturday night as a no state emphatic rejection. I keep using that word. I don't think I can get a better word. An emphatic rejection of the PM's constitutional voice to the parliament. What are the political implications here, Dennis? Oh, well, of, of course, the, uh, uh, the vote is a disaster uh, for Anthony Albanese. Uh, it is well beyond what people expected. It's certainly not what he expected. It's now worse than the Republican vote uh, and looks to be even worse than the preamble vote uh, in 1999. Uh, so this is a record low vote uh, for a referendum. And the architect of it uh, was Anthony Albanese. He promised it at the moment he was elected and from there on has campaigned for it. He told Aboriginal leaders they could have what they wanted. He gave it to them. He gave no compromise. He gave no conciliation. He gave no real attempt to get bipartisan support. At no stage did he say to the Aboriginal leadership, look, I don't think we can get this up because he believed he could and he believed he could do it on the vibe. So what we've actually seen is now the electorate overwhelmingly rejected, basically because of a lack of detail. This was another decision by Anthony Albanese. On Saturday night, Al uh, Anthony Albanese said he took responsibility. Well, he did have to take responsibility. He had no choice. Today, on the first sitting after, he's attempted to shift the blame. Mm. He's trying to suggest that, you know, Peter Dutton's really at, at, at fault. Now, I don't think there's any immediate fallout uh, for uh, uh, Anthony Albanese in terms of a challenge, but it has damaged his credibility, it's damaged his judgment, it means he's out of touch with the Australian public, and this will be something that his colleagues will look at over the coming months mm. into next year, and if there's anything else, any other big policy... He makes it a mistake on, then that will be doubled down. Not only that, the big danger for him is if yes, campaigners, as they already have, start to blame him for the failure and not take the blame themselves. This is Anthony Albanese's referendum. It's his result. He tried, though, on uh, Saturday night, and it's been the, the sort of the script for the last couple of days to try and make this about Peter Dutton and a lack of bipartisanship. But you don't get bipartisanship by saying, this is my idea, take it or leave it. That's not what bipartisanship is. And, of course, that's what the PM offered. He, he wouldn't move an inch on any of this. Um, a whole lot of captain's calls here. He's continuing them today, Dennis. He was in the parliament today backing in Makarata says that the Treaty Commission is still on the table. Now, after a vote like that on The Voice, what do you reckon the numbers would be if the Australian public was voting on a Treaty Commission? That's also got to concern his colleagues because he has no licence for this from the voter. Uh, none at all. And, and these are questions which will continue to be asked by the Coalition because as far as the Makarata Commission is concerned, there's already been a million dollars spent, and we don't know what it was for. Before the I'm referendum, <laughs> Linda, Burney, <laughs> Linda Burney said, oh, we'll let you know after, and there's been $26 million allocated to the Commission. $26 million taken out of the budget, allocated. Almost a million already spent, and we don't know what it was for. Now, these are things that the government is going to have to respond to. Now, the Prime Minister suggested there might be a bit of a review on this. They should. They should do a real review. And then that opens the whole issue that uh, Jacinta Price mm. and Peter Dutton have raised about the, an audit of all of the existing spending. Even the Prime Minister said on Saturday night that people who voted no were not actually voting for status quo. He changed his message, but at least he admitted it, that people who were voting no want things done for Indigenous Australia. And this is where the test is going to have to be. It's going to have to be done without the voice. 
which wasn't the only answer, mm. and the government is going to have to be held to account on what it does now, and the Makarata Commission is one of them with a $26 million price tag.